Apartments were firstly introduced in The Sims 2 Apartment Life. There is pre-made apartments in Belladonna Cove. Just pick your family and start exploring to see the price range for rents. The pricing will depend on how nice the area is. These buildings are just decorative, by the way. Once you choose your lot, you can move alone or with other sims. You get a loading screen, and the landlord will ask you to check out the apartments. Each lot will have a few available, and you can just click to see them. Sims get there to take a look and most are quite empty so you'll need to buy furniture there's usually at least two units available so you can look around for the one you like best if you like one you can rent it right away sims will pay and sign the contract with the landlord once you've moved you'll get your mail in this cluster mailbox some have a trash chute outside of each apartment. In Sims 3, apartments were reintroduced with late night. Bridgeport Center has a few pre-made apartments. There are these buildings. Hover your mouse to see the basics. You'll know the apartment type, the number of rooms, and the price. If you click, you get a little bit of more story and information about the building. Then you wait and move like always. Sims appear at the lobby, which has three things. A wall mailbox to get your mail. A call box to call other residents. And an elevator to visit different levels. Sims always live on the upper level, so using an elevator is a must. Most apartments have furniture already. Mm. But some buildings don't have trash chutes, so Sims have to go down to take out the trash. And while the buildings look huge on the outside, what you interact with is actually quite small. In The Sims 4, apartments were reintroduced with city living. And they've been updated recently with for rent. San Maishuna is similar to Bridgeport. It's a metropolitan city divided into four districts. The districts are Flavor Market, Arts Quarter, the Fashion District, and Uptown. There's a few apartments with eco living and for rent. Remember, there's a lot of set dressing. You can see the basic details by hovering your mouse. If you click something, you can see the layout, the price, and the lot traits. Most apartments have love traits, and others have challenges. So the one you pick depends on what you'd rather deal with. You get a general description of the place, it can be furnished, empty or bulldozed. Then you're ready to move. One loading screen later and that's it, you're in the building now. These buildings work similarly to the ones in Sims 3. But instead of a lobby, you have a hallway. When the mailman delivers, Sims can check their mail in here. They can write and read all kinds of things on this bulletin board. There's a trash chute in most of these buildings. But smaller buildings have normal trash cans outside. 
there's different models of mailboxes and there's elevators in the bigger apartments but they just teleport you in and out building you can change furniture in all of the games a building has restrictions in Sims 2 you can change the paint the floors add columns change the color of certain elements but you can't mess with the structure at all and you can't add anything outside of your apartment in sims 3 you're able to change the walls inside you have total freedom inside of your apartment but you can't do anything to the exterior walls you can't even move the windows. Sims 4 gives you freedom to edit all of the interior walls. You can do anything as long as you don't go out of your perimeter. And this includes the exterior walls. So you can affect the building's facade. You can basically rebuild the whole place. as long as you don't actually destroy it all. The rating and the rent may be affected if you change too much. Neighbors. In Sims 2, some neighbors will welcome you when you move in. You'll often see the neighbors in common areas. Sims can knock on their door and they may be invited inside. If you have a good relationship, you can ask neighbors to watch your kids. If you share walls in a low-income area, there's a good chance for noisy neighbors. Sims can bang on the wall, and this makes them stop for now. You need to watch your noise too, or landlords will complain. They also complain with smell from trash. They'll keep complaining until it's fixed, and you lose relationship each time. In Sims 3, no one welcomes you, but you see neighbors going around. You can greet them when you see them. Again, you can ring their bell and they will come out. They start talking to you. You can ring their bell if they're not home. You can't even visit their place at all. You can use the lobby skull box to call residents. They'll tell you if they're available and will come down to meet you. Visitors can also use this call box. And finally, neighbors make no noise and won't complain about years. In Sims 4 City Living, neighbors don't always welcome you, but you see them in the hall. They may ask you to hang out even if you don't know them. They may even invite themselves when you have good food. Neighbors will always welcome you in Tamarang. You can invite them in. And they have a few special interactions. They can have a neighborly chat. And you can see what they talked about. They can complement the rental conditions. Suggest hosting a charity gift drive. Suggest hosting maintenance day. These give happy moodlets and complain about rental conditions. If you have a mess, neighbors may offer to help you out. And they ask to hang out after. Neighbors will often invite you into their unit. And you'll get a loading screen even if they live next door. Again, neighbors can be very noisy, especially if the lot has lively neighbors. 
This gives Sims negative emotions. Sims can knock on their door politely, but it's likely that they'll be ignored. Sims can try pounding on their door angrily. This way, they're more likely to stop or come out. Sims can complain about the noise to make them stop. Don't be surprised if they don't take you seriously. You must watch out for their own noise, especially at night. Neighbors will pounce on your door and ask you to stop. They threaten you if you don't. For rent, introduce break-ins. This can be done when neighbors are gone. You get a loading screen, then scenes will start forcing their way in. If they're successful, you'll get this event. You won't be able to leave unless you cancel it or it's over. Since walking like they own the place and can do whatever they want. They can steal stuff if they're cleaved to maniacs. Something unique is being able to snoop. Sims will snoop for a bit around certain objects. They may find nothing, but they may find a secret and you can check it out on their profile. This gives them a playful moodlet. You should leave before the event ends, or else the owner may return, and it's likely they fight your son. You can keep their secret or blackmail them for simoleons. Secrets can also be discovered by snooping around the mail. And eavesdropping. Roommates. In all of the games, you can get roommates to help you out with the bills. In Sims 2, Sims can propose to their friends to be their roommate. But they may say no. So it's easier to use the newspaper to search for a roommate. You can see the Sims' personalities, skills, and jobs. You'll see a few sims to choose from. Once you pick one, they arrive to move right away. You cannot control roommates, but you can click to see their stats. Here you can see their roommate satisfaction which depends on the relationships and needs. They live autonomously. Sometimes they clean, cook, etc. You can interact with them normally. And your relationship with them matters. Because if you're not getting along or their needs aren't being met, their roommate satisfaction goes under it and they're likely to move out. You can always kick them out. And this happens differently if they were friends. In Sims 3, you have to enable roommate services on the phone. Once you do, you can set their type. And you can set the max number of roommates. The more roommates you have, the more money you can collect. But make sure to set a limit unless you want to deal with this. 
Sims are going to call. <laughs> Tiganog. Roommates show up at 9 a.m. And Flimser. they just move in. Mm. You can interact normally. And you may ask them for a few things. Sims can try to convince them to make a meal, for example. You're more likely to convince them if you have a good relationship with them. You can also convince them to repair something. Or to clean something. And Sims can mooch from them occasionally. They will get angry if you ask too often. But unlike Sims 2, they won't leave even if they have a bad relationship with you. They won't even care if their stay is bad, so it's convenient to keep them. In Sims 4, you can ask friends to be your roommate. They are likely to decline if they already have a home. You can place an ad for roommates on the phone or the PC. A few sims will visit the next day. You can get to know them first. The number of roommates you can accept depends on the number of beds in the unit. They'll complain if there's something they don't like. You can accept them as a new roommate as they're visiting. They accept heavily and move in. Again, you can control them so they do things autonomously. You can thank them for what they do. They may sometimes bring friends over. It doesn't matter if you have a bad relationship with them. You can kick them out. And there will be no harsh feelings. Landlord. In Sims 2, the landlord visits every day to make sure everything's in order. He rakes the leaves, picks up the trash, dreams the bushes, etc. He may leave if there's nothing to do, but he often asks to hang out if you befriend him. He hosts a gathering for the tenants every Saturday. He orders a pizza. So a few neighbors may approach and hang out together. It's worth showing up at least for the free food. In Sims or city living, there's a landlord which you barely see. In for rent, they're called property owners and they'll visit when you move in. Sims can compliment and complain about the living conditions. They may show up randomly. If you let them in, they'll check out your place and help you get things in order. Issues and emergencies. Things may break in all the games, and Sims can call a repairman or try to fix it themselves. In Sims 2, Sims can also request the landlord to repair it. They may not be better than your sim, but they'll try. You can also ask the landlord to help you with bugs. Dangers such as fires are present in all of the games. In Sims 2, there are alarms nearby which alert firefighters. They arrive right away, and they won't even charge you. So fires are not a problem here. In Sims 3, there's no alarms in some places. So if you didn't buy one, you're on your own. Same with fixing broken things and everything else. In Sims 4, there's fire alarms around the apartment. There will always be one in the hallway, which will alert firefighters. 
They arrive rather quickly, so there's no need to panic. In city living, things are on their own when their stuff breaks. But if something in the hallway breaks, you can complain to the landlord. Seems cold. And now it's the repairman's problem. In for rent, you can call the owner if things break. He'll arrive right away to fix it. You can ask him to check specific objects even if they're not broken. There may also be maintenance events, such as an electrical failure. Things can try to fix it themselves. They'll be compensated if it works. Or they can call the owner to fix it. He arrives right away and gets to work immediately. The rating goes up if he fixes it. It gets fixed even if you don't do anything, but the rating will go down. And you get a bit of money. Other events can be water leaks, stove explosions, hauntings, etc. Rent In Sims 2, rent is due every Monday. You'll be notified by the landlord each week. He will check the mail by Tuesday and visit the sims who haven't paid. He demands rent and you'll be charged right away. If you can't pay, he goes back three more days until he kills you. Again, in Sims 3, you have to pay rent each week. If you don't, they'll send a repo man. They show up and go up to your apartment. And take two objects. This will keep happening every week until you pay. In Sims 4, rent comes once a week. They cut your power if you miss paying. They cut your water if you miss paying it for another day. The landlord may visit. You can then invite him in. And I'm not sure why he does that. It's not like he can demand rent. When things break, you can still call the landlord. But he won't care. So all of these things can be really inconvenient. If you miss another week, a repo man takes away two objects from your unit. They leave and the utilities are back, unless you fail to pay another week. With for rent, it works similarly, except the owner takes two objects the first week. You can pay him your rent in person. you have to pay utilities separately. Extras. In Sims 2, rent can be lowered or increased depending on your relationships. The roommate's needs are replenished while they're at work. Sims 4 is the only game where you can play as the landlord. You can set a few unit rules for tenants. Tenants can revolt if the conditions get too bad. Sims can give keys to their friends so they can enter freely. They can also host a neighborhood pub lock. There's an event to adopt pets. There's around 40 different lot traits. And 14 lot challenges. Mold is perhaps the most dangerous lot challenge. It can be just allergenic, and this makes Sims dizzy. The problem comes when it becomes toxic mold. It evolves fast. Sims get increasingly sick the more they're exposed to it. The 
they'll be throwing up and leaving more mold behind. They walk differently. And may die eventually if they're still exposed. To prevent this, things need to clean it. They can use fire, which is not a good idea. Or they can deploy a mold begun bomb, which gets rid of all the mold in the lot and cures sins. And that is a wrap. Thank you for those who made it this far. I'm still not sure if voicing this was the right move, but I'm just experimenting. I hope you have an amazing new year, and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye.